much about it. I know that it, that it exists. That's all I know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, for it. I hope so. Is there a second part? Uh, yeah. Um, as I know it was a short series, but did you, I guess, did you realize the, the, um, the feeling that Triello was the mother figure for all the other girls? Mm -hmm, very much. Um, just in that she was older uh, than all of them, and that was... I didn't even really have to realize it so much as it was told to me from the get-go, from the audition process. Like, uh, we get a little picture of the character, two or three lines about them, like a, sometimes a paragraph, and then dialogue that they actually say. And that's what we have to go and uh, create a character before we audition it. And then you get some notes from the director and you get to do it again. And that's part of her character description, that she's like the mother hen of these girls. Um, and that's hard to do when you're being a mother hen and the character is only you're 13, 12 or 13 years old. But, uh, I mean, obviously the things that she deals with, if you've seen the show, she talks about having her period, and that's something that the little boy girls are never going to experience. Um, because I don't believe they're going to grow. They're just going to stay, you know, eight for the rest of their life, which is awful. Well, awful if you are them. Great if you're like one of our type of eight-year-olds. You're like, cool, eight forever, but uh, not if uh, you're a trained assassin. <laughs> uh, who hasn't asked me? Yes, ma'am. So more Yakimo to come, and I'm working, still working on Shinchan, Shinchan, Prang on Shinchan, uh, which is on on Adult Swim at night and also comes out on DVD in May. So get that. So I'm still, still playing Miss Anderson on on Shinchan, and uh, am I doing anything else right now? I think uh, those are the only projects that I'm working on. Um, I'm directing right now, but it's top secret. <laughs> as it as it usually is, uh, Funimation's got quite a few things that we just can't tell you. Sorry, guys. Uh, so that's that's what's keeping me busy at the moment. Yes, sir. In the hat. Oh wow. Um, I I don't know about video game writing at all, especially since so many games that people here at cons would be interested in originate in Japan. So the storyline and all of that, they do all that. Um, anime writing is not as creative as you would think because again, the story has already been established. And uh, what our head writers get is a translation <coughs> with a basic time code, which that is where in the script each character says their lines. And then that's given to a writer who has to make what the translation says sound more not translation-y, as we say, and turn it into actual dialogue that also fits the flaps. Um, I guess the best thing to do would be to contact Funimation. Uh, I think on their website there is contact info. Uh, and if you are a legitimate writer, they can maybe put you in touch with the head writers. We have three or four head writers, and we each have a team of writers beneath them who they dole out chunks of shows to, like here you write these four episodes of this. Um, you'd probably have to give a sample of your writing, you would probably have to um, do some anime writing. They would say, here take this and adapt it and let me read it and see how you do. So That, that would be uh, my advice. I hope that it's correct. <laughs> yes, in the alchemy, um, state alchemist uniform. How would a person go about getting into voice acting? Become an actor. Become an actor, first and foremost. And if that you're like, well, I don't want to be an actor, I just want to be a voice actor, this isn't really a job for you. <laughs> because it's more than just liking anime, it's more than just getting into the character you're playing, you have to understand how being an actor works, how you make the decisions that you make, how you become the characters that you become. Um, and it's a hard job. So, I mean, we have some people who have, a lot of people at Funimation have other jobs because it's also not an industry where you can always make a living. 
Um, the only reason I can is because I'm not just acting, I'm also directing. And if I weren't directing, then I would probably be waiting tables and voice acting. Um, so get educated. Go to school if, like, I don't know where you are in your school process. Like, if you're still in high school, take a drama as your elective. If you can't because you also have music or band, go be in um, community theater plays. If you're in, uh, or take theater from the local community college or something like that. Just start getting involved and learn the lingo of acting. Learn how to take direction. Uh, from there, to be a voice actor in anime, you need to live where the work is which is Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, Los Angeles, New York. If you're Canadian, you can work in Canada. If you're not, you can't. Um, <laughs> so um, unfortunately, that's just how it goes, because you have to be there in the booth so we can sync your mouth up with, with the animation. So you have to live where the work is. If you're really serious about it, maybe, and you're still young enough, maybe think about going to college in one of those areas uh, so you can get yourself established there, start doing theater in the area, build up a resume, get an agent, um, get a voice demo made, your agent can help you get auditions. So, yeah. anything that you'd want to know about becoming a professional actor, I mean, being here and asking me the questions, that's good, but um, all this stuff is on the internet, on YouTube, you can watch other panels from other cons that people have taped, that's the most common question that we're asked, how do I do this? So, if you want uh, other actors' opinions or advice, uh, check out YouTube, um, go to like Crispin Freeman's website, he goes very much in depth about uh, being a voice actor, so check it out. Who hasn't asked a question? Yes sir, in the middle. Uh, does Funimation ask you to come to the cons or is this something that you choose to do on your own time? There are uh, times when Funimation wants to promote a particular series because it's going to be released soon. Um, and in those opportunities, at those moments, the actors are approached by Funimation, hey, we would like you to come to SakuraCon, uh, we'll take you there, you know, we'll fly you there, we'll put you up and stuff, can you go? And sometimes we can't because maybe we're working too much or we have some other commitments. So that's one thing. Another time, the conventions approach us, say we would like to have you as a guest, we'll bring you here and uh, you know, fly you here and feed you and put you up, can you come? And so that's how it works. It's, we're really, as actors, not supposed to approach conventions. Because they would be like me asking some of my friends who live in other states, hey, I want to come visit you. Um, pay to bring me out there. And also, get me a rental car and feed me the whole time. You know, it's, it, it's rude <laughs> uh, to do that. So it's up to the conventions. Um, sometimes it's up to the fans. Fans can write in at or email the cons about guests that they would like to see. And sometimes if they're nice about it, the conventions will listen. So, um, and a lot of times just depends on our work schedules. Some of us can get really busy. Uh, or some people go to cons practically every weekend, like Vic Mignogna seems to always be at a convention. <laughs> um, but also, he's not directing, so it's easier for him to get away. Every time I leave, if I'm directing, I have to hire someone to do my job for me while I'm gone. And then when I get back, because we can never have wasted studio time, because time is money in this industry. So I pay someone to direct for me, and then I get back and have to watch everything they did, and a lot of the time, there's things, not because they've done a bad job, but because they're not me, that I'm going to want to record again, which then costs money. So um, when you're directing, it's, it's harder uh, to get out to cons. But I try. I try because I like coming. I like meeting you guys. Yes, Mulan. <laughs> uh, who's the easiest character you voice acted? Who's the easiest character that I voice acted? Um, gosh, probably... Yakimo is easy because she never yells. <laughs> she doesn't talk much louder than this, ever. And she also doesn't have a lot of emotion that she shows. So that is easy. I could play Yakimo all day and never worry about straining my voice, ever. <laughs> um, so probably her. Uh, Chisame and Negima was also easy because it's the, most, it's the closest to my natural speaking voice. So that one was easy, too. Anyone who hasn't asked a question? 